really think it's true? That he's landed? Yes. He tried once before. What will he do? March towards London. And Uncle Richard will raise an army and march to meet him. Oh, being shut up here in Yorkshire, it'll be five days before we know what's happened. We know what will happen. Disaffected Welshmen, banished men, riffraff from Brittany. With a following like that, what chance has Henry Tudor got? But if Henry Tudor wins and you marry him, you'll be queen. He won't. How could he? He's got no real claim to the throne. Only his mother's royal descent, and that's through a bastard. His claim isn't even as good as Warwick's. Nor is my uncle the king's. Slish. Elizabeth, I don't like Uncle Richard. Oh, yes, you do, Edward. Don't you remember? Uncle Richard said he'd bring you a hawk. When? When he comes again. It's true about his having landed. Yes. Who? Who's landed? You know who, Warwick. Henry Tudor. Near here? Will we see him? No, he's miles away. Where is he? And Uncle Richard. I suppose by now the armies might have met and fought, and it might be all over. Henry Tudor dead. Uncle Richard might have been killed as well. No, it will be one or the other. Strange, isn't it? We've known his name for so long. When his mother was our guardian, she talked about him all the time. <laughs> and yet we've never seen him. Now I may never know what he was really... Nobody like. knows. Nobody knows what he'll do. He's king, and yet nobody knows anything about him. I suppose it's true. About the battle and Uncle Richard. They said it was only rumour. I feel it's true. What do we do? Wait. Wait to hear from Tudor. When his mother talked about him, it sometimes seemed as if she was warning me. Warning you? Yes, I remember once she said, he's not like the Plantagenets, he's a Tudor. There's nothing secret about the Plantagenets. They know what they want and they try to get it. Mm. But the Tudors have Welsh royal blood in their veins. And that means that there is always something in their hearts which is a mystery to themselves and to everyone else. And now you will be married to a mystery. Don't <laughs> take it for granted, as his mother did. But you know it's always been accepted that you should marry him. Never. But our father suggested it when Henry Tudor was in Brittany. But the king didn't mean it. It was only a bait to bring the Tudors to England. Well, then why did his mother agree? The Lady Margaret Beaufort would have agreed to anything to get her son on the throne. And if there was even a chance of marrying him to me. After all, whatever anyone says, I am the true heir to the throne. When Uncle Richard usurped it from our brothers, he took it from me, too. Henry Tudor knows that his best hope of claiming the throne and keeping it is to marry me. But he needs my consent, and I may not give it. But you must. No. He needs me, but I don't need him. He may have won a battle, but that doesn't mean he can hold the country. Whether he does or not depends on me. Oh, does it? Yes, it does. If I marry him, the Yorkists will give him their support. But if I refuse, they'll turn to Warwick or to Lincoln. If you refuse, he may put you in prison. Not unless he wants a rebellion on his hands. I am Elizabeth of York. So, he's got to come a wooing. Yes, he has. <laughs> Do you think he'll come here? Here? No. Uncle Richard knew what he was doing when he sent us here. Henry Tudor may have won a battle, but he'd never dare to show his face in Yorkshire. <laughs> There's a troop of horsemen coming. I'll go out to the battlements this No, state. Edward, come here. Stay with me. Is this Uncle Richard? Will he bring my hawk? No, Uncle Richard is dead. Then who is it? It's a nobleman with a large company. Fetch my ladies. I must get ready to greet him. Perhaps he has come a wooing. <laughs> Sir Robert Willoughby. Sir Robert Willoughby. Madam, I am sent here by the King. He is proceeding to London, and it is his will and pleasure that I should escort you there, together with your sister, the Lady Cicely, and the Earl of Warwick. We are grateful to His Majesty for his consideration. And we are grateful to you for bringing us his greetings. We shall be glad to have your protection on the road. 
No doubt you will wish to rest your men and horses, and we shall need to prepare for the journey. We will be ready to leave in a week's time. It is the King's wish that we should set out immediately. Sir Robert, where are we to lodge in London? His Majesty knows that you will be anxious to be reunited with your mother, the Queen Dowager, and therefore he suggests that you and Lady Cicely and the Earl of Warwick should lodge in the Tower. But my mother is in Westminster. Nevertheless, the King would like me to escort you to the Tower. <laughs> All the public announcements, not a single word. My name isn't even mentioned. Does he think he can keep the crown without marrying me? The Yorkists would never allow it. If there are any Yorkists left when he is finished. He hasn't. Hasn't what? Well, he hasn't killed Surrey or Northumberland. They're in the town. With us. We only lodged here. We're not imprisoned. How about Warwick? Is he only lodged here? Yes. Oh, Elizabeth. Lincoln's become a member of his council. Tudor's going to be king. I know. He'll send to you soon. What is it? There's a rumour. Oh? He's considering a French marriage. A French marriage? Oh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. How long do you think he means to keep us here? I don't know. Well, he can hardly keep us here forever. If he doesn't marry me, he could never let anyone else marry me. No, do not announce me. I will announce myself. Countess of Richmond. Do we curtsy to her? It is for her to curtsy to us. Elizabeth. Ah. How good it is to see you again. My dear Cicely. Oh, you have grown since I last saw you. <laughs> My husband wishes to be remembered to you. He says I am to tell you how much we have missed the gentle guests in our household. Please give Lord Stanley our kind remembrances. I will. But I am sure now that we are all in London together, he will come and visit you himself. I hope you find your rooms comfortable. The king himself lodged here when he first reached London, and he was well satisfied. But if there is anything you need, you have only to let me know. I wish the Earl of Warwick could be with us. The king felt he should have his own household. Yes, but if we could see him now and then. He comes to mess with you. Yes, but... He's getting too old now to be in the company of women. And the king was anxious that he should be paid every respect. He must be very lonely. He has the company of his servants. I'm sure he is well cared for. But I must not forget my errand to you. The coronation is to take place on October the 30th. And it will give the king great pleasure if you will both attend. us for the occasion. Of course, our clothes are not quite as fine as his, but at least we were given the proper precedence in the procession. After the Countess of Richmond? While he is king, she will always take precedence over everyone. Do you know the worst of it? He has made me look so ridiculous. He's coming to talk to you. Oh, Cicely, don't leave me. Do you like music? Yes. 
So do I. What do you think of my Welsh harpist? He plays beautifully. I created the barony on your behalf today. On mine? Sir Robert Willoughby has created Lord Willoughby de Brooke. I'm sure he deserves it. For bringing you safely to London? I think so too. I hope he looked after you well. We travelled very fast. Apparently that was your command. I knew the countryside would be disturbed with so many soldiers returning home. I wanted no harm to come to you. You were very kind. Not kind. Careful. Your Majesty, must the Earl of Warwick return to the tower? I believe his lodgings are quite comfortable. He's not lodged there. He is imprisoned. But at least he's safe. Safe? When I was a child, I knew what it was to be used as the object of other men's ambitions. No, 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 not my uncle or Lord Oxford, but others who wanted to use me to get near the throne and then sit on it themselves. I soon learned to recognize them, but Warwick is not sharp-sighted. He has no instinct for self-preservation as I had. I'll not throw him to their mercy. He's safer in the tower. You were wrong. You are not only careful, you are kind. No. No, no, no. A king can only afford to be kind in little things, never in great ones. Your Majesty, all those years ago in Wales and in Brittany, did you always think you would be king? <laughs> I can see. I shall have to speak the truth to you. Why is that? Because I think you know falsehood when you see it. You haven't answered the question. Did I always expect to be king? No. Not at first. But when I got close, it's like that children's game of grandmother's footsteps. When first you start tiptoeing towards the throne, you can be sent back and no harm done. But when I got very close, not to reach it then would have been absurd. And that's a fault of mine. I don't like to look ridiculous. That's why I'm careful. I never step forward without first testing the ground. No wild leaps into joy. No ludicrous stumbles into disappointment. I must go and thank my harpist. I'm glad you like music, too. Did he say anything? No. Nothing. It's quite all right, my dearest cousin. I asked if I might visit you, and permission was graciously granted. Cousin Cicely? We are very glad to see you. I was pleased to hear that you were a member of the council. Pleased? Interesting. Ah, and a little surprised, too, perhaps. I? No. Why should I be surprised? Ah, I think I was surprised. As a matter of fact, I think the whole country is astonished to find itself where it is today. Where is that? That's well, rather hard to say, isn't it? Now, there's only one man to whom the situation is perfectly clear, and that's Henry Tudor. Of course. Yes. There is one thing which may not be quite as clear to him as it is to the rest of us. And what is that one thing? Or oh, is it a riddle? <laughs> we love riddles, don't we, Cecily? <laughs> Certainly. Riddles, rhymes. Which is this? Neither, cousin. It's plain fact. Most of the loyalty that was given to Henry Tudor depends on his promise to make you his wife. Now, if he should break that promise, uh, not that he will, but if he did... My dear cousin, I'm sure that when the date is publicly announced, I'm sure that you, as the most trusted counsellor of the realm, will be the first to know. He has made it look as though he's been forced to marry you by Parliament. Yes. Don't you 
Mind? He will never come a wooing. It is not in his nature. But he always does what he means to do. And if he is marrying me, it is because he wants to. Footstool for the Queen. The Queen, but not yet crowned. There's no need. As my wife, you are Queen of England. But only as your wife. Of course. Isn't that enough? <laughs> It must be, mustn't it? You have the crown. You have a wife. And now you are secure. Am I? <laughs> 